but and I'm not trying to diminish yeah. uh, this. There, there are different levels of racism. Mm. Uh, there, there's the, there's the, uh, you know, what you're talking about. There's like nine out of t- ten times the black man's going to end up doing the job in the match. Mm. But I, but I'm asking specifically, did you encounter any individuals, you personally, where you, you knew based on their statements or their actions that you were, you were going to be a victim of racism? Yeah. Uh, I won't go say this, but I'm going to tell you this. This story here. When I was in WCW, okay? I ain't got nothing to say bad about Ole, but other people do. But I'm going to tell you about Dusty real quick, okay? From what I know, because I've been there. When Dusty was getting ready to leave out the company, okay? And um, Watts came in and took the book over. Watts, he likes athletes too. He likes real athletes working for him, okay? So I was one of the guys that he called and he was going to give another contract to, okay? So at the time, Magnum TA was, he worked in the office too. You know, they gave him a job and he called, his job was to call guys and give guys contracts, you know. So he called me one day at home and said, uh, he goes, Hughes, uh, um, 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 Watts want to talk to you. Boy, Bill Watts want to have, he wants you to come to the office, want to have a talk with you. I said, sure, I'll be right up. You know, because his, his office was in the CNN building. I lived down by the airport. I used to then. So I hurried up, went on up to the airport, went on up to the office, you know, got in the elevator, went up to the top floor there, got off, walked down that long hall they used to have. Like a long hall, man, you know, it's like a tunnel vision. Anyway, he walked down that long hall. You go in there, receptionist, tell, you know, I'm here, Mr. Hughes is here. Tell Mr. Watts, Mr. Hughes is here to meet with him. Go on the hall they used to have. Like a long hall, man, you know, it's like a tunnel vision. Anyway, he walked down that long hall. You go in there, receptionist, tell, you know, I'm here, Mr. Hughes is here. Tell Mr. Watts, Mr. Hughes is here to meet with him. Go on in the back. His office is in the back there. Went on in the back. Went in his office there. He was just, it was just him in office when I went in there. Before the meeting started, Dusty comes in. He's sitting behind here. I'm sitting in front of the desk right here. Dusty's right back here and his other seat by the door. And now before now, on the phone, Magnum was telling me, and he was telling me, we're going to use you, we like you, you're a great worker, you're a hell of a piece of talent, you know. So I get to the office there. Sit down, how you doing, you know, Mr. Watts, you know. And then Dusty comes in there and sits down and shuts the door. Now, he's behind me there now. And I'm sitting there talking to Watts. All of a sudden, he has this totally different opinion about me, right? And I'm, you know, I keep doing this, looking out the corner of my eye, and I see Dusty doing stuff. This guy's on the truth. And I see him giving him signs, and, and he's asking questions, different questions. I'm going like, what in the world happened here? You know, you know, you know, that that type of thing right there, right there showed me right then and there how precious that guy was behind me there. And how precious his business really is, because a lot of guys used to tell me, man, this is precious business, Curtis. You know, this is real precious guys here, man. They act like they're your friends, man, but they, they hate blacks, man. You had a you had, you'd run into a junkyard dog mm-hmm. a few times in your career. Uh, did did you did the subject of racism oh, yeah. ever come up all the time? Because he was one of the Dogs, most famous. Eddie Long, yep, too. Ron Simmons, Pez Watley, all the guys told me, man. They told they schooled me. They school all the brothers. You know, you, the young guys coming in. They'll tell you the truth. They'll tell you what's going on, so you don't be a fool. You know, you're running around hanging out with these guys. No, they rednecks. You know, they can't stand you. You know, all, don't get me wrong. Now, all of them ain't like that now. Okay. It's just a handful. Do you, do you find it it's uh, pervasive among the the wrestlers, or do you find it more the the management? I think it's more the the people on the top top people, you know, the ones that's pushing all the buttons, man. I think that's the ones that uh, really show it, you know, because the regular guys, wrestlers, they don't show it. It's just the guys that's running the show. It's pretty obvious what they're doing, you know. I mean. 
You'd be a fool not to, to see it if you were in the company, man. You know what I'm saying? Because myself, I grew up hanging around white guys, man. And I know how someone that's prejudiced acts. I don't care how much you try to cover it and paint it up and cover it up and all this crap, man. I can tell. You know, I just, just, just raised around them. All my best friends are white. I mean, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not just saying it just because, you know, we're talking about this. But that's God's honest truth. I mean, I got some... T.C. Carter tell you that, you know, almost my friends are white friends. High school, grade school, I mean, my best friends some, uh, I grew up with, still friends with them, they're white, you know. And, and <laughs> I ain't blind, man, when it comes to that kind of stuff, because I didn't been, been, been around it, lived it, you know, seen it. I mean, you know, it's, it's, you know, and when I got in this business, I saw it, man. The old timers told me about it, you know. Rufus R. Jones told me about it. Poke Chop Cash told me about it. Ruf, you know, Junkyard Dog, Ron Simmons. I can go on and on, man, you know. They tell you about the business. It's the God's honest truth. That's how it is. I tell guys the same thing. I tell the white guys this. I tell the black guys this. The Mexican guys. This is, I tell you the truth. I'm not going to tell you no lies about this business because I don't want since if I'm training you, I don't want you to come back and say, how oh, come you didn't tell me this? Right. I'm going to tell you the God's honest truth. This is how it is. Take it or leave it. Either you want to get in this business and deal with this stuff or just get out and do something else. Why give somebody some false hope and praise about something that, 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 that later on down the road is going to break their heart, you know? Might as well tell them the truth right off the bat. These young people coming in this business, you know, why, you know, play games, man. You know, and that's what a lot of these people do, man. They play games with these young people, you know. These, these young black guys in this business, you know, they come up thinking, hey, man, I'm a good athlete. I can do this, you know. And, and they work their butts off, and they don't do nothing with them. Just beat them up. Kick them to the curb, you know. And, and I'm not trying to argue with you. I'm just I'm challenging you sure. is what I'm doing. Uh, you mentioned Ron Simmons' mm -hmm. circumstances and why he became a world champion. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you respond to someone that would say, well, you know, The Rock is a black man and, and he was one of the most successful guys well, when he decided he wanted to wrestle? The thing about The Rock is he don't look black and he can pass for either or. And the or part is he passing for, see? The or part is the part that he, the people see him as a white person. He talks like it. He don't act like he's black. I mean, you know, come on now. He's married to a white lady. Don't get me wrong. Rock's a good friend of mine. I like him. I mean, you know, but I'm just being honest with you. You asked me a question. Oh, I, I you gave you a thing. softball. I was just wondering whether you were going to hit it there or not. Yeah, I'm okay. just being honest with you. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I'm telling you something. Just like if you get raped something broad, they're going to treat him like a black man. Right. You know, anywhere around that one. You know, you're black to me. That's what they'll say out there in society. You know, 